Hey guys, how's this going? It's Chris, I'm coming at you from Vaporwise in Jackson, Tennessee. We do have three locations in Jackson and we have one in Union City. So definitely swing by any location. We will always be here for any and all of your vaping needs. So today I'm doing a, re a device review, but I'm actually really, really looking forward to this one just because I've already heard a lot of hype around this. You know the brand, you know the company, you even know the name of the device, but they've come out with a new part two. It's from uh, Geek Vape, it's the Aegis Legend 2. So we're definitely gonna dive into this one. We're gonna check this out. And I'm gonna show you pretty much everything that it has, what it does, what it's capable of, and then we'll go from there and then I'll hit it for a couple of vapes and let you know what I think of the tank. So we're gonna dive right in now. Let's go check it out. So this is the device and this is the box that will be coming in. As you can tell, you pretty much, if you've ever seen a Geekvate product or have used them yourself, you do recognize the packaging. You will notice something really different right off the bat. And I will touch on that when I get into the inner workings of the device and everything else. But this is what it is. It's got your warning label as required by law, has the Geekvate name on the side as well, has their uh, web, uh, website, and then all your little listings in here, your warnings, the warning label, and then it has your contact packages in here and I will show you those as we open the box and dive into it. So without further ado, let's slide into this and they keep the glossy type box on here and then it's got the Geek Vape on the side with the logo and the name on top. And there she is. So right off the bat, you're gonna notice if you've ever used the original Aegis Legend, it doesn't have the rubberized framework on this it is the ip68 so it is drop shock and waterproof according to the website but now they have made it thinner they've made it lighter this is more cushiony to kind of survive lighter impacts but this framework which i believe is to be like a zinc alloy style is supposed to be denser and take a little bit more of basically a hit if it needs to it's got the name right there they kept it simplistic this is the black they do offer other colors as well this is the one that i liked Overall, it still looks similar to the original one with the slight differences and I will get into that a little bit more when we go to power this up and go ahead and use this. So I'm going to go ahead and fish out the tank and we're going to go from there since that has to sit for a few minutes. So then you get your little introductory cards, your warning cards and everything else that Geek Vape supplies you, lets you know, you know what to be careful of, what to avoid, what to look out for. They do have their user manual in multiple languages as well you do have your accessories box and in this box you have your spare little o-rings and your little plier wrench and i will show you what that's for here in a second you do have your charge cord now because it is the newer version and everything nowadays is updating to it this does use the type c charge cord but it is nice that they supply that for you you do have a spare glass which again is nice that they provide you a spare bubble glass. It's not the straight up and down glass like a lot of other devices have been doing. It is a spare bubble glass. Now, according to Geek Vape, this is supposed to, hold, the tank holds 5.5 mils. Uh, most glass, most tanks are standard right around five. 5.5 is becoming the new norm. There's a lot of other tanks that are doing that as well. And this is your second coil. Now I'm going to actually put this coil into the tank. This is the lower wattage coil. The one that's pre-installed is a 0.2 ohm. It is a 70 to 80 watt coil, which is more custom for my vaping. This is the 0.25. It is a 45 to 57. And I want to try this one first, just because it is a newer style tank. It is updated. Um, the lower wattage tank tends to pull out a little bit more flavor in my experience. So I wanna give this a shot first just to see how this hits. So I'll show you that as well. And this is the tank. So it is an updated Zeus. They have changed the logo instead of his face. Now it is his hand holding a lightning bolt. They have widened the airflow on this. And as you've noticed, it is a top airflow. So the air is basically going to pull in from the top, come down into the bottom of the tank and then come up. And that's where your vape's gonna come from. And they also have changed the style of it a slight bit. It is an A10 Delrin tip. So you can swap it out with other A10 tips if you so choose. But we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop this out here. And this just unscrews. And like I said, this is a press fit coil. So right out of the box, the coils sometimes are hard to pull out. You kind of feel like you're having to force them. Some people are worried that they're gonna pop something on it that shouldn't be or that it's going to flop across the room and then they're going to lose it. So that's why they give you this tool here. You simply just place this underneath and it just pulls right up like that. So no muss, no fuss. 
So I'm just going to put this to the side. I'm going to take this coil. I'm going to take this and see. So it is the 0.25, it is the KA1, and it does say 45 to 57 watts on the coil. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this. And it does have the tabs on the side to help you line it up easier. So all you do is just line those where they need to be, push down on it, and it's done. So go ahead and screw this back on. And then to open this to fill it, it's a quarter turn, basically 90 degree angle. And then you have two wide filling ports on the side to help fill this faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some juice in here. Screw this back on, quarter turn tight. And this is adjustable as well. And it's pretty smooth. Some of them are kind of stiff right out the gate. That one does have a smooth smooth turn to it. Here's the device, as I said. Now, one, one change that they did make to this that I really like is on the first one, it always seemed a little difficult at first, just until it got worn in a little bit, enclosing the flap for your battery. This one, you just slide down, this pops open, it is spring loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and put my batteries in real quick. Now, should be all you have to do is push down and then it kind of clicks into place you may not always hear it but it pops right back in i like that a lot that is a big a big plus another one here is one thing that a lot of people had issues with in the first one was their charge port because it always had that odd little flap cover thing that when you pulled open it kind of was in the way if the tank was on in certain ways and then if you pulled on it too hard it popped right out this one actually is a flip cover which is actually really nice because it's all combined right in here. Now, over time, as you see where the white is, that's going to put strain on that as you keep doing this, which is why with batteries, I prefer using an external battery charger. But if you use the cord, it is nice that this is a lot more accessible. Also, you have a lot less worry of liquid getting in there because it basically just kind of rolls off as you see the little lip that it has on it. Fire button has a nice click to it. Right now, because I just put the batteries in, it does power on. So five clicks to turn it off. As you see right there, it does say the name in a kind of little nice fade. Five clicks to turn it back on. And there you go. And obviously no atomizer because I don't have the tank on here yet. So it does give you your watts, your ohms, your voltage, your puff counts, and then your amperage for the power on the coil. So up and down is still the same. And it goes in 0.5s. So this is going to go all the way up to 200 watts. and then round robins back down to five. So if you do overshoot and you don't wanna keep going back and forth, up and down, you can actually just go in a full cycle like that as well. To get into your menu, it's gonna be three clicks of your fire button, and then it'll let you change your adjustments to whatever type of power you're gonna be using, whether it's your bypass, which is just going from battery straight to your top, um, regular power, which is wattage, it does do multiple temp controls, as you saw there. Now. Also, and this is just a little kind of side thing for people who like to change them out. Click this three times to get back into that menu option. And if you hold both the up and down or left and right, it changes the colors on your screen. So if you have a color preference, I'm actually gonna stick with the blue. If you have your color preference that you like, you just keep it like that and then you can adjust the different colors. Now, you will notice if you can see right in there, that little green unlock. Now, everybody usually asks whether a device has that option. This is already showing it. Now, this is one of the bigger improvements and changes that they did on this device. That's what this is for. This is just a slide and it just slides and then clicks. With it open, it says unlocked. The green is unlocked. If you slide this down, it says locked. And then that little green lock is showing locked. So it will not fire you can't mess with the settings now you can't fire while it's locked but it is nice to know that now it is completely locked and it does have a bit of firmness to this you do have to push this it's not a simple slide um, it shouldn't even after being used a few times it shouldn't get to the point of where it's just going to magically do it on its own in your pocket or anything like that that you have to worry about whether or not it's going to keep messing up and even if it does slide closed it's just a simple slide up to unlock it it's not going to mess with anything it's not going to ruin anything but in a nutshell, that's the whole device. She is really nice to look at, I'll be honest with you. It does fit in the hand a lot, a lot more comfortable than I thought it was going to. The little padding, extra padding, it feels like they have on here is nice to hold onto. You kind of have a little bit of a squeeze pressure to it. 
it just overall is just very clean looking. It is an updated look without being too much. It has a simplicity, yet it's very classy on its own in that. And it does kind of get kind of get fingerprints. This chrome part or this metallic part is going to get it more than this part is. This will wipe off a little bit easier. But I mean, nowadays with any of the devices, that's going to be a running problem. Overall, very solid, doesn't feel super heavy very comfortable to hold so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to pop the tank on now and as you're seeing it's reading at a 0.26 which is pretty pretty dead on since the 0.25 coil now the only thing right off the bat appearance wise that somebody might say is because this top here does seem it's about accommodated for a 24 25 millimeter tank uh for best if you're going for the flush this i believe is a 25 or 26, I'm sorry. Um, the wider base on this does seem to make it stick out a slight bit. I don't mind, it's not a big deal to me. There are people out there that try to do have that flush, flush fitting overall together. So it's not that bad and it's really not even noticeable if you're not really looking at it. We're gonna go ahead and hit this a couple of times and I'll let you know what I think of the airflow and how the tank hits. So you got to see everything up close and personal with the Aegis 2 from Geek Vape. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this a couple of times and let you know what I think of the tank itself. It is at 50 watts. I'm probably gonna bump it up to 55 just to see if, how, how much of a difference there is between them. This one is rated between 45 and 57 for people who don't vape super low or super high, I'm sorry. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a hit. I'm gonna let you know. As with most sub-ohm tanks, the cloud output is very, very adequate. You're definitely going to get a, a good pull out of this. Now, the top airflow is going to be a little bit more restrictive than what people are used to as far as for bottom airflow. There aren't a whole lot of tanks that have it. The Zeus is probably one of the most well-known for. That's basically how they started out of the gate and that's what they're sticking with. So it does have a little bit more of a restricted pull to this. You also, because of that, it also has a little bit more of a muffled sound, so it's not as loud and whistly as regular bottom airflow sub tanks are, but it's not a deterrent. It does not, to me, it doesn't make it, you know, any different of a vape. It's just a different style. So at 55, it's got a lot of flavor coming out of that. Very smooth, not much of a throat hit. I do a three nicotine, so I'm more about the flavor of it, but the flavor is definitely there. It's not oversaturated. It's not overly powerful. It definitely pops the way that it should. And it's actually a very comfortable vape. Now at 55, which is what I just bumped it up to, like I said, it, it's, go, it's rated for 57, but. So you do hear the airflow a bit more, obviously with a little bit more power behind it. I almost pick up a slight little bit of gurgling with that. I don't know if it's just because it needs to sit a little bit longer or if it's just because it is the lower wattage coil. It's not really meant to be pushed super hard. At 50, I didn't hear it. At 55, I'm noticing it a little bit more. So I'll keep an ear open on that and see if that affects it at all. Being top flow though, and it, this is a big, big plus for this. Being a top airflow, it does not encounter the leaking issues that most sub ohm tanks will do. now. I don't believe in anything being 100% proof against anything, but this tank does not leak anywhere near what other tanks will or could do just because the airflow is on top. So that is a definite positive, uh, positive upkeep there. So if you have it, as long as you have it sitting like this, you're, you're not really gonna have to worry about anything as long as you're keeping, uh, maintaining it properly and you're using it on a regular basis. But that is the Aegis Legend 2 with the new Zeus tank from Geek Vape. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to stop into any of our shops. Like I said, we have three in Jackson, one in Union City. Any questions about any of the products that we carry, please let us know. We will do everything we can to answer them so that you understand and know everything that's going on with what you're using. If you have anything that you'd like to see a review on, please reach out to us and let us know. We will do everything in our power to make that happen for you. Until next time, guys, this is Chris from VaporWise. Keep on, babe, strong.